Hey foodies, well by request I'm going to show you how I keep my tiny ass kitchen organized. I think I've shown you guys before, you know, the dimensions and the size of this kitchen and how there's this huge behemoth of a refrigerator that I don't understand. It's ginormous, but it holds nothing. Anyway, we'll start with this little corner here. Um, when you have a tiny space, hanging stuff really helps. I got this shelf off of Amazon, I want to say for like $25. And it's perfect because I can put my big clumsy appliances that I use all the time, my food processor and my blender, my measuring cups. I have uh, plastic and glass, glass because sometimes I make candles and I need to melt the wax. Um, and this is for my bigger, bulkier utensils. And you know, when you, um, even if you cook a lot like we do, you don't, know, I honestly don't think you need like 18 frying pans or saucepans. I use that one for my salsas. I use that as a saucepan and then this is just an all-purpose, um, you know, you want to heat up something real quick. I have a strainer and I also have a colander and then I have my two metal mixing bowls. In here I have my plastic flexible cutting boards and no I don't always follow the color codes um, I mean they all wash the same anyway and my instant pot inner uh, seal lid ceilings because when I make yogurt I don't want it to smell like chili so I change out the rings often because um, these things have a tendency to hold odors down here I just have my plastic mixing bowls from the Dollar Tree a cheap toaster a uh, muffin pan, my instant pot sling, and an, uh, the pot in pot. I have two bread pans for meatloaf and bread, and I have a half pan, and then that stainless steel I use um, when I do a scallop dish. So that is that. Um, I do have a uh, space where I keep like lasagna pans and uh, you know a couple things like that. So down here underneath the sink, I got this handy dandy organizer also off of Amazon for less than $30 and it holds all of my necessities, um, dust rags, regular dish rags, veggie wash, all of the cleaning supplies. And I used to put grocery bags in here, but now I just uh, kind of stash some gloves in there. So. For dry, we don't have a dishwasher obviously, so we dry our dishes in the sink. If there's an overflow, we do have plenty of space to the left to put down a uh, drying mat. And then that's my other colander. I keep that in the sink all the time. I throw stuff in there as I cook, and then I can just toss it in one full swoop. And here is like my little onion station, I guess. Um, I repurpose my green onions as soon as I'm done with them. I put them in the water and then they regrow really quickly. So um, that's a tip right there. This is just that these are where I store all the pictures of my food that I post online. Here's where we store our dishes. Now because it's just me and JR, we have two of everything except he likes having more of his cereal bowls. Um, but if, I, if, you know, if we have company, I can always run to Dollar Tree. I mean, we really don't entertain this past year because the the pandemonium we're in, the pandemic, the the panda bear, um, and then you know this is all my glass storage, and then we have some more. Um, I love like pasta bowls and smaller plates here, and then on this lazy Susan, I, I like using big mugs for chili and stuff. And yes, butter does keep out of the fridge for two weeks if you want to have soft butter on your toast and bagels and pancakes and stuff like that. Speaking of pancakes and all that, this is my baking cabinet. I'm not much of a baker, but I do use these ingredients quite often in other recipes. And everything I put in um, glass containers or acrylic air, you know, uh, what do they call Vacuum sealed to keep out bugs, keep out weevils, uh, any kind of pests, rodents, whatever. Um, so. I strongly suggest you do that as well. A, a good tip, you can take your rice or your flour, put it in the freezer for four days and it'll kill any eggs so you won't ever have any weevils or stuff in your grains. Love this little handy dandy, um, small, narrow for your silverware thing by Joseph Joseph, but we couldn't remember <laughs> the forks from the knives from the spoons because, you know, I don't know. We're kind of dumb. So I had to label them and I still get them confused. I, I will still find the forks with the spoons, but that's our silverware. 
uh, in the top drawer here, I use all of the utensils that are common all the time, every day, within easy reach. This is, you know, the bigger, bulkier utensils and also the stuff that, you know, I don't quite use every day, but that takes up space. These drawers are extremely narrow, so it, it is difficult to fit a lot of stuff in it. Um, I, this is, you know, wraps and stuff like that. And then this is very infrequently used things like ice cream scoops or rolling pins, um, you know, kitchen twine, things of that nature. Now, this pain in the ass cabinet, I can't stand it. It's down very low and it's very deep. And I had to put a light in because you can't even see in the back there. So I don't even mess with it because I have to get on the floor and I can barely get back up. I mean, I guess I'm getting old, but like it hurts to use this cabinet. So I just store her, my Instant Pot, my soup pot, and my lettuce uh, cleaner, clean, whatever that thing's called. Up above the stove is just the lid for the pots and my guacamole keeper. I do melt some cheese um, and then all of my my jars because I do make my own stuff. I make my own jardinera, applesauce, apple butter, barbecue sauce, salad dressings. So this is where I store those things there. So again, get to know yourself and your kitchen and what your basic needs are. And then that way you know what you need and what you don't. Up there, I don't utilize the space very much, and I keep my Dutch oven and my smaller quart thing. I absolutely can't stand this stove. I hate stainless steel. It's very difficult to clean, and those grids are... It, anyway, be careful what you wish for, because I thought, oh, stainless steel is going to be amazing. No, not really caring for it. And, so, and this is where we keep our glassware. The plastic stuff is on top, outside. Um, we've got plenty you know of glasses in case anybody comes over and then our commuter mugs and water mugs and stuff like that this is uh, where I keep my glass casserole dishes for baking and for making appetizers and things like that this is where I keep my Tupperware but I don't use a whole lot of it and usually it's for leftovers which right now I have plenty of so that's why that's kind of sparse and this is where I store the lids for that and a little extra food prep um, containers so now that my daughter moved out of state um, I don't have as much leftovers anymore to give her I used to have so much Tupperware to give to my neighbors and to the kids but and that's where I keep my cookie sheets and my roasting pan and that's pretty much all of that now let's talk about the refrigerator okay so this here is totally impractical for me because I can't see in it. I have no idea what I would put in there, so that would be very much a pain in the butt for me, um, even though aesthetically it's very nice. Now the big rage, as you can see like from this TikTok and this ginormous fridge, is fridge organization and using these drawers and stuff. And as you can see, it looks beautiful. And this person actually did leave a little bit of room for leftovers, but it's really important to know how you eat. You know, certain diets, you know, you have to have, uh, if you eat a lot of produce, you're vegan, you know, obviously something like this will work for you. But if you have a bunch of kids, then you're going to want to use the organization where you have all the little containers, like for yogurt and juice boxes and what have you. Now this... I guess on the top there's some room for some, um, you know, some leftovers, but like, I don't know. This for me just doesn't work. As beautiful as it is, this is from the Real Edit, the container store drawers. That's all the rage on Instagram, on TikTok, on Pinterest. Now see this woman, she buys all her salads and stuff pre-prepped. I make my own, so I need plenty of room for, you know, all that produce and I really don't have it in my fridge. I'm very envious of these because this is gorgeous. I mean, I wish I had this, but um, you have to figure out what your needs are and what you can do without. And you really don't need a whole lot of everything. You know, I think people tend to hoard kitchen utensils. They have 10 spatulas, they have 15 whisks, and it, it makes life very difficult. So I really encourage you to purge, 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 and know yourself and your family. Everybody, I think, now this is my fridge, everybody has the certain staples they buy every single week. It helps if you meal plan, <clears throat> so then you buy exactly what you need for the week and you're not going to waste produce. I prep my produce, 
So uh, I'm, I'm more inclined to use it. Those are uh, hard boiled eggs right there. That's some chicken I'm going to make a salad out of. Those are regular, you know, normal eggs. Those are, that's my prepping. So, um, cause I used to have a really bad habit of wasting produce. <clears throat> I don't like wasting food at all. You know, people are living in food deserts right now. There's a lot of food insecurity in the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I just, you know, I feel bad doing that. But as you can see, we have plenty of leftovers. There's some pozole, pozole and some tamales. And I make a lot of my own stuff. I made that salsa. Um, I've got the meat right in the back there. I'm going to make a stir fry. Always keep your meat on the bottom shelf. And milk, don't keep it in the door because that's the warmest part of your fridge. So that's why my milk and my creamer are, are also there. Um, and I made some pico de gallo. So, you know, I make a lot of stuff. And we love a lot of condiments. So I try to stuff as much produce as I can, but because we eat mostly fresh, um, my drawer is dedicated to cheese. We are cheese heads. Whatever diet says uh, you can't have cheese on, that ain't for me. So I guess that's vegan. Um, vegetarian I can do, but not a cheeseless diet. Um, the beautiful thing about cheese, because I make a lot of sandwiches for JR for his lunches, um, is that you can freeze it. If it's not a soft cheese, it's very freezeable. So um, I tend to buy it when it's on sale and then I will freeze it. And if you buy the blocks to shred it yourself in your food processor, which I highly recommend, no chemicals, and it's just better. Um, if you freeze it first, it's, it, it's a lot easier to shred. It's not too soft. Got a little bit of bacon hiding in there. And so for our condiments, I try to keep them kind of zoned. I do believe what the professionals say is zone everything. So this is kind of like the Asian cooking zone. This is the mustard and the sandwich spread zone. And I have butter, salted and unsalted, and margarine. This is the salad dressings. Not only is this a wonderful apple juice, but I love these little glass bottles. Afterwards, I recycle them and I put my own salad dressing that I make in them, but I, I pre-cool pre it. So I like it not preheated, pre-cooled. Um, and then here we go again with more condiments. Um, we like putting peppers and pepperoncinis and olives and stuff um, on sandwiches and in salads. I love relish, capers. So I need a lot of room for that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't see that in other people's fridges. Plus we're pickle heads and salsa freaks. Yes, I make my own salsa, but we also buy it. We always love to have salsa and chips on hand for a snack. Um, so as you can see, I mean, it's still chaotic, no matter how much I try to organize this fridge, it just doesn't believe me. I've gone driven myself crazy trying to do it, but this is the best I can do for right now. Um, it really does not have the space that you would think looking at it, uh, it should offer, you know, um, it's just really big. The freezer, it's kind of small too. And I want to show you a quick trick. I don't cook every night. So what I do is I buy the family packs of chicken breasts, the thin ones. I don't like those big ginormous chicken breasts. Those are crazy and you have to brine them so they stay tender. Anyway, I use those for different stuff. Um, like if I'm going to um, chop chicken up for curries or a stir fry. So what I do is I make different marinades, which takes 15 minutes to do all of these. And I put a couple chicken breasts in each bag and then I freeze them. So then um, if I don't feel like cooking, all I have to do is say grab the jerk chicken and put it in the oven, bake it for, you know, 20 minutes or so, half hour. And I could make a little coconut lime rice on the side with that, um, you know, cook a, a vegetable really quick. So it's a convenient way to have freezer food. And of course, when I do cook um, my meals, if we have a lot of leftovers, I make meals out of them so then we can have like freezer surprise one night because I don't feel like cooking. So we always have freezer foods, but it's not processed. Now I'm not going to lie and say we haven't done that. We do, we're going to try some french fries in our new air fryer. JR likes to get frozen pizzas and burritos and stuff like that, but mostly it's homemade cooking or broths or things like that that go in our freezer. And then this brings me to our spices. Um, I try to zone all this too. So here's my cooking wines and all my vinegars and all of the different condiment sauces that you would use to 
do marinades and make your own dressings and things. That's avocado oil, little cooking wine, extra virgin olive oil, and all of the spices that I use on the regular. Um, and of course, I make my own spice mixes too sometimes, so that's why I have such a huge array. Um, it saves money that way too, so that's um, a plus. And then this is my surplus, this is my overflow. These are the spices that I don't always use, so they don't really need a dedicated place in my rack, but that I either want to try or that I use um, you know, semi-regularly or that really just don't have a home in my spice rack so that's where the additional go but at, as you can see all of my condiments all of my spices to make marinades dressings um, you know whatever prep prep work basically and then th these are the only pans I have I have the only pan I have my blender I have cast iron pizza and a cast iron and that's all I need I have a tortilla press and a mini waffle maker as my other appliances and I mean that's it everything else um, I've got the you know the big bowls I have a big glass bowl for making bread so this is where we keep our food we bought this shelving unit at Target and stuck it in this closet and I zoned everything here here as well so here's all my tomato products I do occasionally use soup and no, these it, it, the cans don't go all the way deep. I just pull them forward just for the aesthetic. But um, and Jr. likes the chunky and the spaghettios sometimes for lunch. Don't judge. Um, but the, we and we love beans, as you can see. So with the pandemic, I really did stock up. But since we are going to be moving in a couple of months, um, I'm probably not going to be doing that. So we're going to just eat it and not really replace it all like I normally would. Um, and then these are our pastas that I use. I use orzo a lot in salads and soups. Same with the ditalini. We've got some egg noodles, some macaroni. And then these are my dried chilies, some pimentos there. So I try to keep everything kind of, you know, in, in a like sort of a thing. So here's, um, we've got some granola bars and a bunch of nuts and snacks. Here's my broths and here's my grains. This is where I keep the rices we use most often. Some 15 bean, we've got some quinoa and some lentils, uh, different color lentils, some Israeli couscous and again I keep them all in uh, vermin proof containers if you will. I don't eat cereal, JR does, so that's his cereal thing. We've got some uh, cracker holder, we've got some, uh, he likes that spi that two times spicy ramen. I use the ramen noodles, I don't cook with the packet, but I like sometimes to make my own kind of ramen soup and I just use the noodles. This light I got off of Amazon as well, you get a two pack for like $20. You can either use the magnet or you can put it ter um, permanently and it also is rechargeable it's led rechargeable light because none of the closets in this apartment have any lighting so these are um, all the condiments and sauces as backup and um, my bread flour and my masa flour for tortillas and stuff like that so i also suggest putting some bay leaves around your spices um, and in your pantry because that too deters pests if, if in fact you may have any. Also, you guys get these because it's so much cheaper and so much better for the environment than getting the individual water bottles. These are refillable and you get this, this gadget off of Amazon for about $8. Now I'm going to show you, watch this. Push the button and it automatically pumps the water because not only do I love to drink you know fresh pure water I like to cook with it as well so this has really come in so handy without having to spend you know $200 on a cooler there's all of our hot sauces ready to go uh, you know there's our freezer again and uh, a cookie jar for sweets and stuff like that and then we do have a beverage center as well because obviously I can't fit any beverages into that fridge so this is where we keep um, all of our drinks we also here I'll open that up uh, JR drinks monster he doesn't drink coffee 
And we don't drink pop, we drink a lot of sparkling water and juice. That's pretty much what we drink. And then we also have a Brita filter in here to keep the water super cold because obviously the other stuff's at room temp, which I prefer because when, especially when I take meds, I need my water to be warmer because my it'll hurt my teeth. But um, sometimes I want a really cold glass. So we have both options. And then I have, um, you know, my cold brew coffee. JR loves the Jumex juice. We stock up on that. This is, um, you know, like emergency, and it's also our stuff for uh, smoothies, powders, and, and peanut butters, and almond butters, and stuff. Uh, some random bread there. And then, of course, we have um, our coffee, our cocoa, coffee stirrers. We've got um, some tea, different teas. And then the sweeteners, we've got, I use sugar uh, and honey. I don't use artificial sweetener. I don't like it. Um, and our straws and then this is my coffee maker and I'm going to show you guys really quick uh, it, obviously I save space without having a big Keurig anymore or any type of uh, electronic coffee maker I just use this filter that I also got off of Amazon and the, the water that I just got I put it in this kettle it literally boils water within 30 seconds and then I just place the cup underneath. I, obviously I fill that with coffee and then I pour the water on top and it brews my coffee. So it takes the same amount of time, if not less, to do it that way than it does in an electronic one. Some randoms here, this is one of those pads that buffers your feet so your knees and your legs don't hurt. Our garbage can is a slimline one. Those are kind of hard to find, but I found it on Amazon. We use the silicone um, pot holders and Pot gloves I can't think of the name right now because they're easier to clean and they're not going to catch fire that did happen to me once in my life so um, that's our air fryer now uh, my friend JJ when I lived with him he he really uh, pushed me to use this thing all the time every time I microwave something and now I thank him for that because he turned me on to the fact that it really keeps your microwave clean like you don't get the splattering and I hate cleaning the microwave now I'm pointing it at that because it's metal somebody can you explain to me in the comments how the, it we can have that thing be metal but we're not supposed to put metal like foil or something I don't understand but it makes a good holder for the microwave cover and the fiance just got home from work so I'm greeting him saying hello and see he loves that Jumex that's that's his jam he's all about it we, we, yes, eat fresh, buy local, we live by that. So that concludes my little tour of the kitchen. Uh, we'll probably stay tiny because we're still, we're going to be in an apartment even though we're moving. Hard to find big kitchens and apartments, but we'll see.